Commenced by the Reverend Canon Dr. Justin Holcomb at the 45th Annual Convention of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida, January 25, 2014, at the Villages, Florida. I'm an added resource to what we already have, which is pretty strong. And so I want to be a resource to come alongside clergy, come along rectors, priests in charge, those at uh, parish discernment committees, and serve in any way possible. And when you start talking about leadership development, that can sound really dry and kind of boring and super businessy, and it might start making people suspicious. So let me give you one minute on what I think is at the foundation of what a candidate for vocations or leadership development should be about. And this comes from looking at the trajectory in Scripture. This is both in the Hebrew Bible and in the New Testament. We see that what God does is He gathers His people, He constitutes them, and then He sends them. That's the spiral that we always see. God calling people to Himself to be worshipped. And so that incorporates the importance of our worship services. So gathered to worship, constituting them in word and sacraments as a community. And these are all things that I had written down before our bishop's address. But constituting them as a community together, loving and serving one another. And then the being sent out. And we are very good at worship. That's one of the things that drew me. I was, I was somebody who came from the outside of the Episcopal Church on purpose. I was not born into the denomination. I came from the outside on purpose because of the worship. And then the foundational piece of the, the deep, robust pastoral nature and the care of the community of the Episcopal Church. What we're not known for all the time is being sent, is the mission missional impulse, not just missions as we heard last night, but the, the to the neighbor, how to read the culture, how to read the neighbor, and how to then serve them after you do that. So how we're, we're gathered, we're constituted, and we're sent to bring word and deed that, that has the texture of faith, hope, and love. And our words and our deeds, that should be reflective. And the big thing that you have heard is that this isn't just, ministry is not just ordination. It is across the board. If you're a member at the church, I mean, I, for me, leadership development starts at the visitors. But uh, we'll start with members. From member to bishop and everywhere in between, that's where leadership development is. And multiplication of capable leaders is critical and essential for the mission of the church. And that was in the paper that was presented to you. That's a working paper of working out some of the ideas of what I think theologically, philosophically, methodologically we should be about. So what happens is if you focus on leadership development, there's really people, maturity, and mission. And if you don't have any people, then it's really just theory. It's really neat ideas on the paper, and that's it. And so getting to know the people who you're thinking about, if I can serve them. So I've already met with some seminarians, all the way down to thinking through what courses fit this program at your school. Like I want to get down to the need for you to serve in that capacity, but also come alongside in other capacities as needed. If you don't have maturity, then you have a bunch of doers. You have people who have some direction they're going, but without that self-awareness and depth of maturity. And if you don't have the mission, then you have a bunch of consumers bunch of people who are focused on their own personal development, which is extremely important, but it doesn't stop right there. The finding ways to be open to those in our neighborhood to come in and watch us worship, that was the picture in the New Testament. Jesus was upset because the money changers took the court of the Gentiles. Worship is evangelism. It's not something we do and then we just get sent. That's one of the most important things we can call people to and say, come and watch as we worship the one who transformed us, the one in whom we have our only hope. So our worship and what we do as a family throughout on Sundays and throughout the week is one of the most important things we can do. It doesn't stop there. So I don't want to I want to make sure that you don't hear leadership development is somehow outside of the church. That's all theoretical. It's about you and how we can serve you, how I can serve you. Let me just close on something that is extremely encouraging. I've spent the past few weeks talking to numerous, uh, numerous people who are in the process, in the diocese. There's also a handful of people from without, outside of the diocese. They have their own divs, they're thinking about it from non-denominational Presbyterians, they're all over the place, saying, 
We want to come in. Can we come into your church? Can we serve at your church? On top of that, there have been, in the past two weeks, two churches that have come to me and said, hey, can we come in to the Diocese of Central Florida? I don't know how that works. We're going to figure that stuff out. But the encouraging thing is there, there's not just a drain of leaders.